Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, AccuStats Video Productions is proud to welcome you to the 2017 Make It Happen Straight Pool Invitational. Yeah. All right. Right here we are, as we always do for Make It Happen, in the Aramis Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, where the Make It Happen series was born in 2012, and we have done that 11 times. This is the 12th edition. Accustats Video Productions invites six of the greatest players in the world, along with the help of its customers, to participate in a round-robin format, as is the Make It Happen series. We're playing straight pool, races, excuse me, 150 point games, and this will continue through the round robin for the next three and a half days, leading up to Saturday night when we'll crown our Make It Happen straight pool champion. We want to say how much we appreciate the um, generosity of our three signature sponsors, Aramith, Simonis, and Diamond, for providing us with the best equipment in the business. And we want to also say how much we appreciate each and every one of you for your loyalty and support over the years, not only of the Make It Happen series, but of AccuStats Video Productions. We're awfully proud to be able to do this, but we couldn't do it without your help. So thank you all very much, and also to all of our Make It Happen family that's come here to watch it live in person again. This is now the 12th time I get to say this, and I'm going to keep saying it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. You've made it happen. Okay, this will be the uh, second match of the uh, daytime session here, and um, it's match number two. So now I'm going to introduce our two competitors. Our first players from Beast League, Surigao del Sur in the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, you may not know that this gentleman has quite a resume in straight pool, even though uh, you don't get to see him play it that often. Part of his accomplishments include a victory at Derby City in the George Fells Memorial Straight Pool Championship. He's also a former World Pool Masters champion. He's got a high run of 198. Sponsored by Miyuchi and by Bugsy Promotions, he's known as Robocop. Please welcome Dennis Orcuyo. Thank you so much. And his opponent making his debut at the Make It Happen series from Bernin, Germany. He's the reigning China Open champion, and he's also going to participate this year on his very first Team Europe Moscone Cup coming up in just a few weeks. He's got a high run of 293. He's sponsored by Predator and by Czechio. Would you kindly welcome Joshua the Killer Filler. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, you may lag for the break. Your referee in charge of this match is Mr. Carswell Ransom. Official timekeeper is Julie Ha. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the host for this week, Double J, Jeremy Jones. Well, thanks again, Kenny, and welcome again, everyone, to the 2017 Make It Happen Straight Pool Invitational. We brought back the same six players as the eight ball. We're here in Edison, New Jersey. I'm Jeremy Jones uh, with AccuStats Video Productions and just shortly going to be joined by Kenny Schumann. As Kenny talked about, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're playing to 150-point games. Uh, it's a round-robin format again, so everyone will play each other. Um, this is our second match in day one. Uh, we had uh, dual defeating Shaw which was a rematch of our final last night in the eight ball. And then uh, later on at seven o'clock, we'll have Darren Appleton and Shane Van Boning. It's 9.30. It'll be Corey Duell again against uh, the man you're looking at right now, breaking the balls, young Joshua Filler. Okay, not the break he was looking for here, Kenny. And, and once again, we'd like to thank Kenny Showman for joining us. Thanks, Double J. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, you, you know me you know, for a long time, and you know I love straight pool. It's my favorite game. I, I grew up around this part, and uh, that's what we grew up playing. So I'm excited, and you're sure right about your initial comment that that was a very poor break by Joshua. You can't afford to let a guy like Dennis Ricolo have an open shot to get things going. You may never shoot again. Well, not only that... Uh... I think even more so, like like you talked about, to get things going. Uh, we'd commented earlier in the opening match, Danny had mentioned that Dennis uh, had been a little under the weather the last couple days. I talked to him before this match, and he said he felt pretty good, though. So I don't think that really had much to do with the miss, the opening miss here on the nine. But we're going to get a quick look 
at, uh, at Josh, and we're going to see. Uh, we've all watched him practice a little straight pool here this week, and he's he's run a lot of balls. And just as you mentioned in the uh, in the opening, also his debut uh, here. Uh, at not only to make it happen, he's had a lot of debuts uh, here recently in the states. That being the U.S. Open, and 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 a, probably his biggest one coming up in just a few weeks for the Team Europe in the Moscone Cup. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a pretty high honor in our game to be one of only five guys that are able to join that team, be it Europe or USA. And of course, you're a multi-time Moscone Cup veteran yourself, and I, I'm sure that you feel that's um, a pretty big highlight in your career. Yeah, and uh, you know I've been fortunate enough to have have a lot of big wins uh, playing over many years, but. Winning or losing, I don't think there's been any greater compliment to me than to be able to represent uh, my country, my peers, my heroes in our great game of pocket billiards. And I'll tell you another reason why, and I think maybe even more so, usually it's the fans, but we travel a lot. We play a lot against a lot of guys that, uh, that are friends of ours. But normally during that year of the Moscone Cup, which is every year, but dur during the year, there's 30 or 40 guys that don't make the team. That are, are that are striving to make the team. So, I mean, you're kind of representing them, too. I mean, a lot of people say it's just the country, but, you know, through years and years, of, we can we can all name a probably 20, 25 guys that, that have had a chance in past years to make the team and never made it. So, really, the, the thought of them when, you, when you're out there playing is huge. And just back to the straight pool here, Kenny. He's made a nice couple of shots to get the rack open. Yeah, one thing that I'm going to uh, ask you right now, too, and I, uh, I'm pretty sure we both we both probably know, but um, the fact that Joshua is left-handed is going to mean that the break ball that he's going to prefer, isn't it going to be kind of on the other side of the stack versus yourself as a right-handed player? You'd want it uh, as you're standing to the table uh, on your left. Right. And in good. Joshua's case, wouldn't it be on the other side? Yeah, and the funny thing is, the only other time we really consider things like that is when we, like, play one pocket. What you can reach? Well, you, well what you break to, you know, it would normally be, if you're breaking, it would be the right pocket. If you're looking at your screen right here, it would be the left. But it's quite opposite when you're talking about the break shot. What Kenny's talking about is being able to reach over that left side of the table if you're looking at your screen and reach a lot of shots much easier for the break shot. <laughs> And, and doesn't that come into play even more if it's a severe cut and, you, you know, the blind pocket kind of cut, if you can, you know, lean over and get good and solid. And absolutely, you know, absolutely helps it does. Helps you sight the shot yeah. a lot better. Yeah, and what, what Kenny's talking about is Josh really won't maneuver to something that's unnatural to get to that side. But if he has choices, he's going to prefer that side uh, to shoot the break shot. Would you think, Jeremy, then being that the case, that he's going to work to the five in order to shoot the three to bump the two out to his side? Well, or maybe that, even do it now that he didn't get straight enough? I think he's looking now more at the bottom of the rack balls, that being the seven oh, or 15. I, you think? Uh, yeah, okay. just, just, uh, now he could produce here. There's nothing wrong with that, and it, that he might still do that. But... But now he's got to get back down on those balls. So I still think he'll use the two to get on the 7 and 15. And I like what you're talking about, but I don't like doing it late in the rack when I don't have a lot of options to gain position. Now, early in the rack when there's 10, 9, 10 balls left, that's, uh, that's a different story. So that's where, as you and Danny always talk about, where your insurance balls come into play. Yeah, and here he's... he's He's made this a little bit of a tester because he fell on the rail because he's got to hit it lightly. And he's got to depend on the angle to get up on that two ball. Uh, he doesn't probably... Oh, okay. great, great speed. Yeah. That's just perfect Yeah, there. and this is just what you were illustrating. When he gets over this ball, um, we'll have... Uh, everybody will be able to see how easy it's going to be for him to reach this and sight it and have a good idea where that cue ball is going after contact because don't you want to kind of pick your spot on the stack where your cue ball is going in if, 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 if you're close enough to the object ball to kind of have that control? Right, and you'll look at where it's going naturally. You don't want to try and make something, uh, you know, produce something that's not needed. Right. But I'll tell you what's so good about this. Like when you're practicing straight pool and you set up the break, this is like the one you would set up. Right. 
Okay. And there was no chance there, Jeremy, that he could have got stuck in the stack because of the angle that he had? Or, well, I or, kind of think it that... it does happen, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. And I kind of think he expected the rack to open a little more there. He um, didn't hit him that hard. No, he didn't hit him that hard. But a real flush hit uh, does a lot to the rack, believe it or not. And you'll notice these guys, they, you know, until, until it's sitting just really well, you're not going to see him just blast the rack all the time, especially the guys that have played a little more straight pull. And I think that uh, I think Josh is really trying, going to want to this next four days uh, show these guys that just how great a player he is, and then we all know he is. I mean, he wouldn't have been able to come here and play in this make it happen without being, you know, he's not a world champion yet, but he's just, you know, you can tell he's a great player. He's got a big win this year in the China Open. And he's got a top ten finish on, at the U.S. Open. I'm not sure if he came and played any of the straight pool events and uh, the one in New York or the one in Virginia that were just not long yeah. before the U.S. Open. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, if he was in the USA, I would assume he did play in those. I don't think he came just to the U.S. Open. Okay, we got, we got the report that he did not play in those straight pool events. Okay. And the uh, Euros, they've had a lot of events leading up for point events for the... Uh, for the Moscone Cup as well. Now he's gonna he's got the seven in the side and the fourteen dressed up, so I'm not so sure he was a hundred percent he was getting the shot he wanted, but he's gonna look at seeing if he can fall on this is it the one or the three in the opposite corner that opened the entire rack. I was wondering if the ten goes. If not, he's gonna use the eleven, isn't he? Yeah, but he'd like to push through the rack, uh, whether that be shoot the 10 now and then get on the one to push through the rack. That's how you open up easy shots for break balls. So you're saying you don't really want to come off that short rail into those balls? No, and and, not, and definitely not without the insurance ball we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And coming off the bottom rail when the balls are stuck, it's hard to get through them. Okay. So in your, in your judgment, Double J, would he just now go ahead and say, oh, well, look, the eight ball is in a good spot for a break shot. Yeah, it's on the right-hander side, but I'm not going to try to, you know, maneuver and manufacture something. Or do you, is the seven far enough out of the rack? It's hard to tell from no, here. No, the seven's in the rack. The one thing about the eight, it's laying in an ideal situation to break the balls. When you but, say that, do you mean as far as how high up on the stack it is? Yeah, and it's just and not, how far away it is. Yeah, it's not too high. You can get a dif different portions of the rack. But the one thing I'm concerned about is playing position to the break. You don't have one like laid over the side to where you can just kind of stop and hold your ball. So he's going to have to play a uh, nice position on the 15 to get nice position on this break on the eight. Uh, that may be too much there. It's going to be close. Now he's going to have to add speed to this, whether he's drawing it or falling it, because he doesn't have a ton of angle. Okay, but again, I think I think Joshua Filler is very satisfied just making a few open off the rack. I know. Well, that's kind of, a, as far as my recollection is, is that's how straight pool was played years and years ago. You and I talked yesterday about the old equipment with the heavy cloth and uh, the balls. It was and harder all that. to get them open. It yeah. was. So, well, consequently, guys had to chip out two or three, and then you'd wind up having to go back in the stack two or three times during that rack. Well, I'll tell you what, watch out for the scratch. And I'll tell you what will bode well to play that way, especially if you're learning the game. If you break the balls playing straight pool and you try to just make three or four come off, well, it kind of, to get through the rack, you kind of have to learn as you go. If you just make the entire rack explode, well, you're going to learn some things. So you're going to learn how to connect the balls while they're wide open, but you're not going to learn the little delicacies. All the of nuances. Getting, exactly, of getting through, up, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. playing short position playing with an insurance ball a little more when you have to re-break. So really, if you're trying to improve not only your pool game, but your straight pool game, uh, that's one way to practice. Oh, don't, let me not just make the entire rack explode. Let me try and just massage the rack a little bit because there are going to be a lot of areas that come up in competition to where you can't make the entire rack open. So he's going to fall for the six here. I and in conjunction with that thought, too, as is, is I think you, you talked about uh, when we chatted a bit earlier, um, 
you don't want you don't have to be in a big hurry sometimes to open those balls. To reopen, so reopen, yeah, yeah exactly. second and third time. Exactly. Yeah. Now here, this is laying perfect. He can put a little speed on this with no problems because he's got the five ball. He should end up with another shot. He's a little upset because now he's stretched and here here comes the left-handed. Here comes the problem being left-handed in this shot. Yeah, you're right. He can't reach this probably without a bridge or shoot right-handed. I haven't seen him I shoot opposite hand. I might look at the 10. Hand. I might look at yeah. the 10 if I don't have the 12 just because I'm so perfect on it. So. Ooh. Oh. A little well, squeaker. Yeah. And now he's really got, I mean, he's got the nine. That's a little too close to the rack for my taste. Uh, so he's trying to figure out now, how can I get on the 10, 14, all that to really just bump one over? That's what he wants to look at. Just bump one over just a little bit. He got a little straight, it looks like. He wanted to get a little bit of an angle to where he could push the 10 over just in the perfect, just above the yeah. nine, just a little bit. Well, again, now that's the right-handed side, but if he's will, if he's willing to do that and wants to, couldn't he shoot the three to get a little better angle on the 13? Oh, absolutely. In order to do that? Absolutely. That, that three really isn't, you know, that helpful for later on in the rack. No, and I agree. Uh, and you'll see the 15. That's like a prime ball to play position on the break ball. Well, there we got a good shot. We can see the outline of the triangle. You can see if the nine isn't in the rack, it's low. And uh, how does that affect the way the stack would open, Jeremy, with a ball that low on the on the triangle? Well, you just got to be careful. He's going to bump the 14, I think, a little more into position here, and that's why he saved the uh, that's why he saved the three and the 11 because that gives him a lot of options. But what Kenny was getting at, just in case you do have to play that, it's not like you're not going to break the rack. But being low on the corner of the rack, you really have to pay attention to the cue ball a lot more. You you involve some scratches. You involved to where, and that anytime you involve scratches, that means you can't hit the balls hard. So you're not going to get the balls open quite as much. Okay, he's got to pound this. He's a little flat. Yeah. You know, yeah, it looks like uh, he might not catch real heavy on those front two balls from this. Might have to put just a little low on it, do you think, to get in there good? Well, if he does that... That's... He doesn't want to slide across the face of the front, too, right? No, he's a little low for that, but the one thing about putting a little low, that'll be all about getting the cue ball to the center of the table and just hoping maybe four of them open up. Mm -hmm. He could drive through this with a lot of high English. Well, where's the tangent line taking him? Sort of uh, the him? first two balls? No, the, I think between the four and the 11. Or, yeah. Oh, it caught a lot of the four. Watch, Watch the out for the pocket. cue ball. This is big trouble. Yeah. Now, that's, that's kind of bad luck in a way, but on the other hand, did he need to actually hit it that hard? Well, the thing he didn't get is he didn't get to drive through the rack with the top English. He needed a little more top, and when it hit that first ball, it kind of glanced a little bit instead of driving through the ball a little bit to slow the cue ball down. So you could definitely consider it some bad luck. Right. But and then on that shot similarly sometimes if you hit it real high after it contacts the stack and comes forward doesn't it tend to bend a little bit so maybe it misses the corner pocket right and it hooks a little bit uh -huh. now one thing tennis is shooting this 10 there's nothing wrong with that but to, to get good i might have used the 13 just to get a little closer to that 10 just to make sure i get through this first part of the rack with a lot of accuracy meaning he doesn't have to break too much he has to break some balls out a little bit. We'll see what he does if he tries to get over on that 12 ball here, or the 7 or 11, one of those. I like, yeah, I like where he got. He's got a couple choices here. Yeah, and he I knows. I think the 12 is the right shot, isn't it? Yeah, and, and when you're looking at this, you say to yourself, does the 11 do much for me? Can I pick the 11 off first and then shoot the 12 and open? I'll have a guaranteed shot on the 7. This is the shot that I'm, I'm not 100% about that. He could have got pinned behind that five ball. you think it'd be bad luck, but things like that happen. Okay, the 14's not horrible for a break. It's a little, little away from the rack and a little high, but doable. I wonder if he could nudge that 14 about two inches closer to the stack off this, but he's not doing it. He's pulling back for the one, I think. No, he didn't. 
Okay, I'll tell you what he could do here, though, is he could shoot the five and come across and bump the 12 just ever so slightly, having the one there, and that, that could easily open a real nice break shot. Got to watch for the skid if he's hitting it light. Okay, he didn't catch the 12. He really wanted to catch the 12, I think. As soon he as might he, move the three here about two inches. Uh, he's a little on the wrong angle, but oh, he needs he to go ahead and go up and get those balls. What you need to do now is go up and get that third. He should have played position on the 13-9, knowing all these are open down here. You want a lot of options when you come back down table. Okay, well that that brings up a point that I'll, I want to ask you about. I'm going to wait till till the rack's over, but it's got to do with balls up table. So I, I want to ask you about that here in just a second or two. But I'm curious to see how he's going to negotiate this. I, he may just have to settle for the 14. Well, and he's gone now to where he's made a decision to himself that he's going to leave the nine and 13 last. Mm -hmm. I think to get on on the uh, the 15, 14. You don't want the 15, of course, uh, as a break ball, but with the 13 there, that, that'll offer nice position to get to the 15 later on to hold for what looks like a decent break shot on the 14. Got a little straight here, though, and he needs to get off the rail with some angle. Not too much angle, though. But now he can go right, right by the 14, 15 with a little high high ball and then just uses uh, talent and his touch to fall pretty full on the nine. I think that's what he's going to do anyways. It looks very natural. He certainly doesn't want He'd r rather use. That's a little light there. Okay, he's going to use the nine to get up on the, the 15 and the 14. Yeah, it looks that way. I would have preferred a little different. I mean, it's okay. I would have preferred the, the 13 to get on him, but and anyway, but just to kind of do a quick recap here, because we did a lot of talking during Joshua's three-rack run there, Dennis missed, Josh broke, Dennis missed the opening nine ball, he rattled it, and Joshua came with 41. And then he, then he had that unfortunate scratch on his break shot and turned the table back over to Dennis. So let's see how much of a price Joshua's going to pay for that scratch. Yeah, Dennis got a little funny here, and what he needs to realize is above the ball, he had no place funny at all because he could kill the cue ball back behind the 14. He did a nice job holding the cue ball up right there. Mm -hmm. But just like uh, a ball, there are certain places to air, meaning you have a little bit more room. There's a good side that doesn't get you too much in trouble. Mm -hmm. What I was going to ask you, so it's early in the rack and up in the kitchen area, there's one ball. Okay. Do you want to go get that as soon as possible? versus if there was two or three balls up there, could you afford to wait a little longer because one can get you to another? Is there a theory on that? Yeah, well, the balls upstairs, is the, I, I pretty much try to go get them as soon as I get the, the rack problems done down below. Uh, Meaning oh, as okay. soon as I get those balls opened up to where I really don't need any safety valve upstairs, meaning up in the kitchen area or up table, that's when I go get the other one, uh, the one that's just kind of by by itself. Because once you get them open down here and you got plenty of options, you want as many balls down here by the rack to choose from once you start working on the break shot and working on how to produce. Uh, but yeah, like this seven ball or a ball even further up, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if there's multiple ones or not to me. It's, it has much more to do with what the rack looks like near where I have to break the balls. Sort of how much more work do I have to do up at this end or if my work is done up here and I kind of know what I'm gonna, how I'm going to end the things up, let me get down table and clear that stuff out. Right, and also another thing just as Dennis showed us in the last rack, that if you have multiple balls up there, you can play it differently occasionally, meaning play all the way to where clear the lower half of the table all the way to where you have like two left and you know they're very accessible from one to another or maybe they're both usable as break shots depending on which which angle you get and then you might leave a couple now when you have just one up there that's a different story you don't want to be playing position off of one to get to just one or two more to end the rack and break so there he had the nine and the 13 which made things uh, gave, gave him choices just right. like playing eight ball 
Air hill going to the rack. You don't have to go in hard. If you catch the four and the eight, everything should open. You'll notice he produced two different break balls, that being the one 11. I'm not sure if the 11's playable, but no. the four is. Well, again, back to the left-handed, right-handed, uh, the four would be preferable because Dennis is not only right-handed, but he's also short. And again, anything around the side pocket area with the cue ball would be ideal, probably, to use the four for the break shot, wouldn't you think? Yeah, and then we're gonna we're gonna see him use the up balls again, which I I kind of think is gonna eventually get him in trouble. He needs to learn how to produce with the balls down low to get on the break. There's not a great one right now, of course. There's not one at, like hanging over the right side pocket or one really near the four to where you have options uh, coming down the end of the rack. So it worked for him a minute ago, and I wouldn't doubt if you see him play the 13 and seven last. I kind of like not doing that. <laughs> and he could bump this one just ever so slightly as well, which may help him. You, know, you notice where the seven's at, right? Well, if your break shot is on what Kenny wants to call the left left hander side of the rack, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see the seven gets you to that uh, break angle a little easier, but he's definitely playing the four here, Kenny, is the break shot. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And again, he's going to use two balls up the table to play position on that break shot. So anytime you're doing that, you have to be more precise. Okay, would you use the seven last or the 13 last uh, as far as coming into the angle on the four that you need? Because it looks to me like you got to be pretty precise here on that seven. Yeah, and you, you want to be like uh, dead straight on the side on it, you, don't you? Well, you play dead straight, or you definitely play with with the angle, meaning don't play any gray area in between. Uh, if you have to make the cue ball run, like say you have to cut it in the side and make, let the cue ball run back behind the four to get that angle, that's okay. It's not something you want, but that's another reason why you try and avoid the ones that are upstairs, because you always want to get a little closer to your break ball, mm -hmm. and when you're when you're looking at uh, a pattern, you really want kind of a stop, stop, stop to end the rack and get to the break shot. So you may have to well, shoot this four from some distance. Okay, that's not the angle he wanted, I don't think. Now he's looking at just trying to open the rack just mildly. Okay, we know that 90 odd percent, maybe even higher, of the shots in straight pool are easy shots, right? They're, Short shots, they're, yeah. They're two feet, a foot and a half, you know, they're mostly. Sh so if you're shooting all these easy shots and then all of a sudden you've got an eight footer where in nine ball it might not be tough at all in this game, doesn't it create a lot more pressure just mentally knowing that you it could end your run? Absolutely, and, and you won't find that with this caliber as much because, right. and not only because of the talent of making the ball, but the one thing these guys do is they address every shot the same. That's why they win tournaments, because they don't lose focus. I'll tell people all the time, you got a ball hanging, right? Playing nine ball. A ball you can never miss. Well, that's when you really stay focused because you have no pressure of missing. So you get dialed in with your stroke and the cue ball much better. So, you know, um, just like any other sport, uh, the best in the world take a lot less for granted. Mm -hmm. And it's noteworthy to mention now that Dennis used good uh, patience and judgment and discipline there. Yeah, yeah. He didn't try to force anything. He knew he didn't have a shot. He played safe. He made a mistake, though, giving him a lot of cue ball. And you'll notice the right side of that cue right. ball is very playable, and the 11 ball is shootable. Well, so. And also the fact that he's left-handed kind of helps him on this because he can look right down playing. the line of his cue. Yeah. Really, a, I think, a, you know, he needed to play safe, of course, but... He could have done a lot better than that, that's for sure. He'd have liked to have been able to get out the rack a little bit, but it's okay. He can break with the 15 or the 14 as well. He's going to bump the 14. Well, he wanted to come in behind it, bump it a little bit, so he could eventually probably use it to open them up. He's going to try and get this angle to be able to go one rail right into him. Now what's the target for the cue ball here? The seven. The seven? The, not inside the seven where the six is at now, just the seven. There's just a glancing blow on the, like that. That way at least you'll move the ten. Now the ten went a long ways, though. He wanted a little less hit. On, that way the cue ball could come up to the center of the table. 
Do you think that Filler's going to pass on this shot, though? I don't think so. I would shoot the 10 with low left and try to come around to where you could shoot either the 12 or the 13 next. But he went right into the wow, stack, what a shot. and that was, that was really well hit. Well, I'll tell you what he did. He just said, let me shoot this in with a natural path. I'm going to make the ball so much more. You know, position, he, he kind of knew it was going to go towards the rack, and he may not have come away with a shot, but he didn't want to sacrifice shooting a long 10 ball with a lot of spin, trying to pull the cue ball with a deft touch to get position on one of those balls. I liked your shot, but sometimes emphasis on, on you know, you got to keep... you got to make the ball stay at table. Yeah, and even if he didn't get another shot right there, you know, he may have had a safety. So, really... Uh, I hate to say this, but uh, I would not be surprised if that safety, that uh, safety that gave up, uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. As soon as I opened my mouth, I, I said to Ooh. myself, I wouldn't be surprised if Dennis didn't get back to the table. But now, if he I don't know if he can get at this. If he can't get at the two, he is good. Is the six not makeable? What about the six straight well, in? Well, if they're frozen, he can throw it in. I think the six in. is straight in. Yeah, he, should, <laughs> he can throw this in. Yeah. I, but you can't hit this hard. you got to just twirl it. Yeah, it definitely went, though. I like that shot. Yeah. What a great shot. Shot away from it. Yeah. A lot of right English to throw the ball just ever so slightly. Little. Now he's got to shoot the 13, really. Yeah. He's on the rail. He can't afford to shoot the 8 and go forward, I don't think. He's looking at trying to shoot the 13, have an angle on the 3 to slow roll the 3 in, and just barely move the 2 over for a break shot. Then he'll open up the one and the five. Well, he's shooting the five now, isn't no, he? No, the three. Just oh. barely bumped the two over. Decent. Think he, think he pushed the two a little too far? No. Sorry. No, okay. anywhere on that side rail, he's got a great angle to go into the rack. The one thing he did is he made sure he got it outside the rack, and he wanted to put a little more speed to make sure he didn't end up on top of the one. As I talked about, or I was starting to talk about a minute ago, I wouldn't be surprised if that safety ends up being Dennis's last shot. I know that sounds crazy. Well, but that, uh, Filler really got a bad roll scratch not to continue his earlier run. Well, to me, that's always been one of the great... Watch whoa, the side. Whoa, watch out. That's always been one of the great appeals of 14-1 of is that... You never know when you're never going back to the table. You never know when you shot your last shot, when right. you go to sit down. Right. Um, so every shot is crucial in this game. It's not, this isn't, you know, okay, it's alternate break. If he wins this rack, at least I'm up next, you know, and all that. So let's take a look at this and see uh, how is he going to cue this and where does he want to hit the stack, Jay? I think just a high ball pretty much with a little catch speed will catch the four. Yeah. But he again, he did, buried. Well, he got lucky it got pushed out because it stuck in there. And as you said, it didn't have enough of that forward power to. Yeah, I don't get think he was the, trying to get that deep. I think he was trying to make more of a glancing blow on and, the corner ball. And, and then have the cue ball come out. Either that or stay low for that 11 ball. It, the 11 ball, he hit it so much fuller, the 11 ball had a lot of travel going off the rack to the rail and back into the rack. So. He's got a tough situation here. He's got a, He's making sure there's no dead balls if I end up leaving him way, way down table playing off this four. Is he playing the five off the 15? Wow. I would never, ever expect that. I don't I don't know. Can he get, he, I don't he know can get he, to it? He can get to it. He's not wanting to hit a glancing blow, meaning he wants to catch the five real full off the 15. Wow. You know... I might, I might regret saying this. I'm going to say it anyway. I think that was poor judgment. At this stage of this match, he had a good chance to lock Dennis up. You let Dennis come to the table like this, just like you said, after Dennis is bad safe, he may never come back. Well, now Joshua may never come back. So I'm not sure that that was not just, you know, youthful aggression. Right. Right, and, and not only that, when you're shooting a shot like that, there's a few situations that you shoot it. Meaning, look at this shot. Okay, he's yeah. going to have to play a combination, but it's either in desperado times, desperate yeah, right. times, yeah. or it's when you absolutely you know it's dead. When you abs there, there cannot be a maybe in that situation when you have other options. Exactly, and he had options. He had safety options right, and lots right, of them. Right, right. 
So that's where I think maybe a... Maybe he was worried about Dennis making it if he sent him up table. Was he worried about that, maybe? Well, he could have put Dennis... Could have been a no, I think he could have put Dennis in a position where, where he, he couldn't, couldn't have hit it. it. Right, yeah. yeah. He could have put him up in the upper right quadrant. Well, is he going into the rack here? Yeah. Well, he better watch it. If he goes into the rack here, I don't really see a scratch, but he could certainly come off the one and nine and make the ten with the cue ball and and and, and bring him down to the low rail. Yeah, I'd, I like being a little more full when I go into the rack where I know the cue ball is not going to have a ton of travel, especially when I got options. Now, if he got to where he didn't have many left, that's a different story. Well, he's going to use the 15 here to open these up a little bit, but he's got to be careful, doesn't he, that he doesn't cluster up a couple of things over there near the 5. Well, the 9 should get away, I think. But the main thing is don't let the cue ball fall to this back rail. Like if he had followed through that with a glancing blow on the rack, well, that cue ball falling to the back rail is a big mistake playing this game. It happens often. He's got a break shot on the four, on the four ball that sits nice. And this is another time to where he could save the three, save the uh, 12 ball to get on that, that four ball later on. And that's, I'm sure that's what he's gonna do from here. So he'll just shoot the 13, fall on either the 14 or six and knock the other one off. And then play the one and go upstairs for the three and the 12 and saving the four for the break shot. And if you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStats Video Productions, joined by Kenny Schumann. We're in our second match of uh, Event 12 in the Make It Happen series. We're playing straight pool, 150 points. Again, round robin stage. So all these players will play each other, and then there will be a fortunate two that make the finals for a rematch. So. Okay, again, he's just real full hits here. You'll notice 14 in the side. Just make sure he has a little bit of an angle to pull the cue ball up towards the three and the 12. And you want to have a little bit of plan, but when they're so close to each other and the pockets are available, don't trip. Don't get a high, don't let your your uh, mind start Tricky racing. trick you a little bit. Yeah, start panicking. You have so many options. As long as you don't get too far away or you get too much angle, you're going to be able to produce. Well, one of the things that I was taught when I was learning this game... Oh, that is, needs to go a little yeah, bit. He could, but, and again, anywhere but, above it, he's yeah. fine. Again, there's no reason to thread the needle there. Just go ahead and get six or eight right. inches above the three. But you see where the cue ball is now? It's kind of in a straight line with the four, mm -hmm. which is break ball. That's how I got taught, that you generally want your cue ball in a straight line with your break ball, which will always give you that angle into the stack, and then you decide by how you're going to cue it, you know, where you're going to hit the stack and right. how you want the cue ball to get out. Or how it is, yeah, right. exactly. Or how yeah. low on the pack it's going to hit. Right. But a good reference Kenny gave you there, it's always going to give you enough angle, but also not too much angle to where the shot becomes very difficult. And that's the advantage of being in a straight right, line. Right, right, right. Now, a lot, of, a lot of players I know, and I know you know too, they like the big angle because they want the big big explosion. But, well, yeah. it depends. You know, sometimes I do if, if, if the... Uh, the reason the big angle sometimes is good is if the ball's a little closer to the rack, okay? And right. You need to get that power from the cue ball right. as you quickly need as possible. Well, that, and also, the cue ball, when the object ball is closer to the rack, right, and the cue ball comes off the object ball, well, it actually gains momentum as the more room you have, you know, like top spin, you know, like a, like a you know how a runner in the 100-yard dash He'll have a quicker time in the 200 than he will the 100 if you break them in half. Okay, well, it's kind of the same thing with the cue ball. The cue ball picks up momentum and picks up more speed to where it can follow through the rack. So when the object ball is a little closer to the rack, well, it doesn't have time to get that momentum to really gain to get through the rack. So a lot of times you do have to add more speed. Or you'll see the real great straight pool players, the guys that really know the game, what they'll do Instead of taking that chance of going through the rack, well, that's when they cue down on a little bit and pull the cue ball off the rack above and just let three or four come out because they don't want to take any chances. Kind of like there. You see how it goes through the balls? It continues. Mm -hmm. Well, when it's real close to a solid rack, 
it's hard to make it go through there. Because you've got so much mass. Well, so much mass, and the cue ball and doesn't no have time, time to gain a lot of speed. So right. the initial bounce off the object ball doesn't do much for you. Ooh. Okay, here he's like, you know, the three's a little high. Oh, I think it's okay, isn't it's it? It's okay, but it's above the spot. So anytime yeah. it's above the spot, yeah. you can tell you're gonna have you're just hitting the top balls, which is fine. Okay, here's the situation. There's one ball up table. How quick do you go after this? Well, as soon as I know my work's done over here, okay. I got everything in position. So if he was gonna settle for the three, he would maybe go ahead and get the five out early. Absolutely. Absolutely. But if he's looking to, if he's as long looking as you to, don't see any trouble. Right. And if he's looking to manufacture something a little better. He's trying to he's bump the bump, bump oh. oh, I thought he was trying to bump the seven right there, like yeah. back the cue ball up. Yeah, I go get the five pretty quick. Yeah, he's going to do that now, I think, shooting a 13. I think, anyways. Uh, well, that looks natural, doesn't it, to do that? Well, it looks natural. The, but the one only has a co one pocket, one corner. You yeah, you got to make sure one. you have an angle on the five. You can't fall yeah. straight. But you got to understand, even if he falls straight, he can screw the cue ball back on the seven. Mm -hmm. So... But Dennis, is, it appears he doesn't mind playing position on the break ball from upstairs. And I think at some time that, or another, that's going to cost him if he keeps doing that. Would he give any consideration here? To the to three in the side? Uh, yeah, leaving the 11 for last with a, 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 about a stop shot and shoot the three in the side where he's got a little bit of distance between the cue ball and the stack. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely he may. Because like you said, and now I see clearly what you were saying, where the three balls high up near the spot, you're going to have to have a big angle to get into the stack from there, or you could miss it all together. Yeah, well, you definitely aren't going to be able to hit the rack with much speed, and that's not required. But, you know, when you're just hitting the top, the very top, and it's not a lot of it, really a lot of times you only push one off the side and one off the bottom. So your choices become limited. Well, he's I definitely indecisive here. Yeah, I don't see the seven doing anything for him. I may look at just taking the seven away now if I can get easily to the one to the five. And I kind of like your break shot to where. I think that's got to be what he's doing. He wouldn't leave the five there to get on the three. So I'm. Well, he's done it a couple times already, though. I mean, yeah, so. but I, but this looks like it's seven, five, eleven to me. I like getting a lot of cut on it too, a little yeah. more than. Than just where it's stopping on the 11, maybe oh, no, back, get the, back, back uh, it up a couple inches. Yeah, you're more near the diamond, maybe even a little past the diamond. Oh, he's going to the 11 now. It looks like Kenny. Wow. Okay, so again, he's playing. He's playing to get really nice, and that's the problem. Uh, if you get a little out of line here, there's no guaranteed natural angle to get the natural angle on the five you need, unless you're shooting the five now from distance. And you know. Coincidentally, he'll probably end up shooting the three from distance as well. So, you know, the, there's, there's, we've got a few players. Uh, okay. Now he's overhit this a little bit too. Uh, wouldn't you want to hit both side rails here and then come back out into the, into your angle rather than lag to it? Absolutely. And not only that, it, it's a little more natural, meaning the, the cue Steve. ball the cue ball wants to gather that second rail anyways. I, I agree with him getting uh, above the ball. He got a little too far. But anywhere above it, you can work the angle out. If you fall behind it and you get some distance, now you got to draw your cue ball. You gotta, there's a lot of things that, whoa, whoa, cue ball. Oh, I think that's good. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Almost, almost right in line with it. Yeah, and he can hit this with a nice medium follow stroke coming off the off the side off the top of the rack to the side rail, and I think hold his ball over there for what I think should be either a shot on the two, a shot on the nine, or maybe something coming off the bottom of the rack. The only thing you might have to be careful here. Can't hit this one hard. Huh, right, you can't blast this. No. That's good speed. Yeah, that's why I hit it more medium and make sure I stay over there with that two ball. And you'll notice that 14 right there, too. That would have been a nice ball to have a look at. Yeah, it doesn't look like it passes, but I think he's got no choice here. Uh, Go I back mean, into the rack. Yeah, I think you got to with a little bit of speed here. And we'll yeah. see how these jumble up. 
you figure him to get a shot. He's got a 9-14 combination. I like what, maybe the one in the side, Jay. Oh, it's tight. I like the combination. I don't figure he's going to miss it. Uh, okay. Of course, you don't want to shoot combinations, but. Yeah, but in straight pool, you'll wind up doing it more, more often than other games just because the way the balls lay. But they're usually, like you said, short and easy. Right. And. I wouldn't call this one easy. I just like his chances. I think the eight's more missable than the combination, believe it or not, just because he's shooting off the rail that way. Here he can cue it however he wants. Got to be make sure he doesn't stick on that 10 and wedge on that 12 now. Okay, great shot. He had with speed. He took care of any of that problem. And now the 13. Oh, this is where you look now to where you see the 6 and 7. That's the triangle you want. You see the little triangle that the 6, 7, 13 make? Mm -hmm. Those are the balls you want to play for last just to where if you can get in line like using the 8. or 8 or, stop. Yeah, and yeah. you can even take the 6 away. Get in line using the 8 to where you can shoot the 7 in the right. side and you just get to roll forward just a few inches. Well, you talk about that triangle and that's, that's just, it's like straight pull 101. Right. That is the core of successful straight pool you know assuming you know you know what you're doing you run the balls but any three balls will make you a triangle right and like you said he could use he could use the uh the eight seven thirteen or the one seven or the six seven thirteen yeah and, and really the eight the eight's close to as good a, a break ball as the 13 and you'll notice that that 11 and 15 once he peels one of them away that would be a nice nice ball to shoot at right before the break on the eight as well so now again, I would go up table and knock off the 15 or the 11, then get that five, get the five right. and then come back down. Everything is open. I'm working real uh, with a real short area uh, on every shot and real full hits, just like our eight ball event. OK, he must be planning for the eight, I'm guessing. Maybe not. Maybe you he's know, still thinking I, I, the 13. I, I think he's playing the 13 just because it's the right handed side. Yeah, but he's taking away his key ball again. I'm really well, wondering why he keeps leaving this ball way up table. He's had some success with it already, but. Well, I think he's going there off the one. Okay. No, he's not. He's going to save the one for the key ball, isn't he? Take well, the five and play the two stripes. Well, the one thing about the two stripes, they're too close together. You want to pick one of them off now, I think, and then come back for the five. If they were a little bit separated, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Just a sure. little bit separated, you want to keep them there. I mean, there's still not a problem if you do keep them there, but I think picking one of them off will serve him well. Now, make sure you don't get straight in on this five. You don't want to have to pound the cue ball. Oh, I definitely don't leave the five, though. He must be playing for the five exclusively again. No, okay. No. He's a little flat here. He's got to okay, hit it. He's got to pound it. Yeah. That's a little short, but he's all right. Yeah, it's not a stop-stop. Yeah, I, I thought he would have wanted to be on the left side of the one as we're looking absolutely he would. but he's not he's going to wind up on the right side well what happens there when you do this now you got to come behind the right. ball so right so. about where it is now would be all right oh he's coming with follow with a little check just, just straight one up. rail yeah yeah oh he's got that's nothing wrong with that but i think dennis will learn in time though that you really want to use uh, the, the object balls to play position rather than moving the cue ball, meaning you need to connect them. Uh, and right there was a prime uh, situation to do so. And I will admit that I'm from the south. I'm from Texas, so we didn't start out playing straight pool like a lot of guys <laughs> up north here. You didn't play in a bar table straight pool, huh? Uh, no, come on now, come on now. We had a four by eight in my own town. Oh, they were not just all war tales. So I was lucky enough, though, that Jersey Red he did show me uh, quite a bit of straight pool as a young man. And then living in Jacksonville, Florida, I told Danny that I got invited to the world tournament in 2000. I lived in Jacksonville, Florida, and fortunately enough, uh, the great Jimmy Karras lived there as well, and he he really spent a lot of time with me uh, over a three month period. Uh, show me really and he kept it simple he, he he didn't show me as much as he told me what the mentality of straight pool is you know that and that means as much get the run continued don't panic don't think you have to reopen 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 
you know, use your brain and your talent to get through the rack. Well, I, I firmly believe that, that straight pool requires the most mental effort um, of any game, even one pocket, because you tend to stay at the table for extended periods of time, and even within any particular rack of 14, you might be thinking out three different patterns, and then something changes, and you got to rethink that all over again. Right. He's got issues with the 714, and he doesn't yeah. need to wait. He needs to go ahead and get that taken care of. Because what happens is when you wait, you end up using your break shot because you keep not falling on it, not falling on it, not falling on it. And if Danny was in the booth right now, he would be giving uh, Dennis a little bit of a tongue lashing. <laughs> just, just because he keeps <laughs> bumping balls, bumping balls, bumping balls. So. Uh, Danny hates, hates when people bump balls unless you have to. And he got himself to where... He really needed to save the six and two and maybe get on the five to drop down and bust the, the seven fourteen because the angles getting from the the two and the, the six to the seven fourteen are tough. And not saying the fourteen's not makeable. Yeah. You may but, be able to get on the bottom and make it, but uh, also okay. And now he's kind of removed anything that would be well, if the nine, safe. yeah, if the nine goes, he can he can just and separate the 12 and the 15 a little bit with the cue ball. And then I don't know about playing the five and coming down to break those two up now because he doesn't have any insurance. Yeah, and you you would think you're going to get a shot on one of the two if you do hit either one of them, but. Maybe he won't hit the stripes here. I couldn't tell. Okay. Is he gonna, he's going to go ahead and use the, uh, the two as a break shot, I'm guessing. Is he going into these now, Jeremy? Well, that's okay. He's got the five hanging. That's yeah, the beauty okay. of coming into him now. But but you would rather had also some of these down down here uh, on the bottom rail to choose from. And that, look at that. How good is that as a break shot? The seven. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And he's got the twelve fifteen later on to just play perfect position on the break shot as well, whether it be the seven or the two. So again, get the one upstairs. All the work down here is done. So you not shoot the eleven, the one. Could have could do well to get a, get the fourteen out of there, but what you do uh, now, you shoot the eleven one, you pick off one of the twelve or fifteen, draw back for the fourteen, then you follow back up for those balls. Really surprised he's leaving this ball again. Well, now that he's here, I think you should take both of these now, then go get the 11 and use that to come down for your 14. Well, you don't like uh, leaving the 12 or the 15 to set up for one well, of the three yeah. balls? Uh, uh, man, I kind of do. Uh, that's just, I mean, in the short period of time what, I played straight pool, what, that was the what, what, what we look for, that one that goes in the side that's just over the top of the rack. So... Yeah, I guess that worked out all right. Different strokes for different folks, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to leave the 11 again to get on the break ball, which is, you would have to say, not exactly uh, textbook. Yeah, I mean, you don't want all that cue ball travel. Right. And I, I think it's going to end up costing him eventually. I don't. It doesn't have to cost him now, but, you know, I don't know. Well, he needs to. He wants to be down below the head string, but he can't get there unless he power draws it. With He's left. gonna have to pound it a little bit. And what happens here now? He may get straight into where he has to pound again. Anytime you have to add speed, that's when you lose touch. That's when you lose where you can fall fall in line. Okay. Dead center of the table here, I think, is the target. Even where he's at now isn't horrible. Yeah, I'd like to have less angle. Yeah. These guys pocket the ball so well. I'm saying anywhere in that area, that's perfect there too. That's pretty All good. Right. All right. Well, the score is 84 to 55, and if you'll remember, Joshua opened with 41 after Dennis rattled the nine ball in the opening rack. So um, it's like seven racks to one since that point. And right. That, and Joshua scratched off that break shot, and we haven't seen him since. No, well, he went for that dead ball off the five. Oh, that's the five right, the ball. carom. Yeah, he the made carom, the carom shot. shot, right. 
And here you don't go forward at all. Going down the side of the rack could possibly uh, offer a scratch in the same hole. So Do you need to use a lot of draw here to get it out? Well, I think it's just a little below center is all, and you'll come across the one, hopefully pushing the nine open. Oh, he put a lot on it. He's lucky that four ball didn't go in because that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why from the top of the rack going through the rack, you, you're, uh, you're gambling. That's for sure. He could have just drew off the top of the rack, definitely opening the nine, opening probably a couple others. It usually happens. And if you want to really watch the, ma not I can't say the master because I haven't seen all of them, but I, I watched some straight pool years ago, some videos whenever I was, got invited to that event. And uh, I watched, it just so happened, a bunch of Jim Rempe. And he really is good at the top of the rack to where he just pulls the cue ball out to the center, three or four or five come off, and then he does his thing as far as getting through the rack. He actually plays for the top of the rack a little mm -hmm. more as a break ball than most do. Mm -hmm. Rempe gave me one of the best tips I ever got in my life for straight pool, and it's, just, it's so simple, you'd think, well, why does it take a genius like Rempe to tell you that? But said, if you're debating what to shoot, just don't shoot a shot that you could miss. Right. Don't shoot. And if you do have to, and never shoot a shot, that's less than like 85, 90 percent make possibility because right. you might get away with that once, but probably not more than once. Yeah, you know, he's got maybe he's got, the, he's got eight. the eight. Huh? He's got the eight, but it's a little funny. And uh, actually, I was going to mention the same thing a few couple racks ago. He took a thin cut on the ten when he didn't have to. And I know it looks uh, that the guys. <gasps> oh wow! You know what happened? I think it grabbed on him. Yeah, but that's, a, I think, more of a result of reopening the rack with a little yeah. uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, so he got a little bit on top of the eight, a little funny. He's trying to hold the ball a little bit, and things happen. I, I know it grabbed, but uh, mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, I think that really stemmed from a little bit of uh, getting in a hurry. Yeah. Well, Joshua has got to take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah, just like the, uh, he's okay. He's okay. He's got a cut on the nine. And just like the the eight ball event, it'd be sweet if we had a little GPS uh, on the cue ball to where we could track the cue ball movement mm -hmm. uh, compared from one player to the next. I think with uh, like a Corey duel, just like the eight ball or Darren, you're going to see a little less cue ball movement than a lot of the other players. We put a pedometer on it or something right. to see how far it goes during the match. Yeah, that uh, that right there will show you uh, how much knowledge they have right. playing the game. So, well, break ball wise, actually the best break ball I believe is the two for a left-handed player. You know, the 14's high and wide. The 10 and five are the 10's okay. But with the three there, I don't know if he's going to be able to leave the two. I was about to say, what's he getting position well, on there? He got a little friendly bump on the fifth, on the 11, but if he hits it a little more full, he's got a lot of thinner cut on the 14 and maybe on top of the 11. So Does a five pass the 10 there? Uh, like no, he's going to play short side on the 10, I think. I think. Well, the, what I was saying was the 10 and then get the three out of there if you want to save the two. Yeah, he'll just... Roll forward a little bit, or punched it forward. That's all right. If it were me, I'd rather shoot the two for a break ball than the five, but I'm left-handed too, and I don't play anywhere near as good as this guy, so I'm not going to second-guess whatever he chooses. Well, he'd like to get on the 14 now rather than the 15, I think, just because you'll notice coming. He can, if he gets pretty full, it almost gives him the perfect angle to roll over behind the five. And even this is okay. Just stay a little bit below the 15. Just a little bit. <clears throat> but one thing about that two ball break you were talking about, it's almost feast or famine when you get on the very low part of the rack and the two's near it. And there's a little bit more of uncertainty. Um, just... Like cue, controlling the cue ball too after after it hits the stack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times you'll come two rails and wind up way, way, way upstream. 
Yeah, because a lot of times also you don't play it with too much of a slow speed. Okay, watch that two ball. Is he drawn to the top or is he trying to go right? All right, he's drawn to the top. Yeah, I don't I don't think you go forward with the cue ball here. No, he could go right into the side of the rack, though. I wonder if he planned on sticking there because at that speed trying to hit the top ball, you really offer trying to maybe get way up table with the cue ball if you get a glancing blow or even a scratch in that side pocket, that opposite side pocket. So, Do you think that that shot that he just played would have been one that you might have said, well, let me just chip a few out off of this one? Yeah, you especially know? if I'm trying to hit the top of the three. Right. You know, especially in that case, if I'm trying to hit the top, did he get a look at this one ball? He's, well, got, he's the got the six. six. He's got the six. It's a stretch, though. I think the 13's got him on the one. Not the 11 so much. I think this, the 13's got him hooked. I'm kind of looking down the line. Now what are you doing? Okay, he's got okay. the nine. Got the nine. That was a great shot. The second shot over the ball, cutting that uh, stripe in and going into the oh, stack. Oh, yeah, that, that was 12 terrific. ball. That yeah, was that a was great shot. Really and hitting it with speed. Speed, yeah. Yeah. Because he knew if he just chipped it in and came over, most likely he'd lay on the left side of the stack and be no good. And you'll notice when all these balls are jumbled up, he's going to take a little more time breaking them. He wants to clear a few. That way it opens paths. That's what it does. You don't get, like, stuck to where everything's jumbled up, doubled up. He almost didn't get a shot there. Well, if the 15 goes on the side, he's going to be pretty lucky that he's got that because that's all he's got. And I think... For the most part, I didn't anticipate these guys scratching their head so much, meaning, how did I get here? How did I get here? How did I get here? Well, Dennis... Is that as, fair as, to say? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, as great as Dennis is, and he is great, and he's had a lot of good straight pull outings and events that, you know, you, you don't think he's known for, but both him, uh, and I haven't seen Josh play enough to know that, but the... Dennis is certainly not a conventional straight pool player. Well, he hasn't played a ton of it. I mean, he's no. played he's played it, don't get me wrong, yeah, yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about that, that shows you how tough versus, all these games right. are. Uh-oh, big trouble here. Wow. So, but my uh, what I was getting at there is that shows you how tough these games are to master. It takes years to master these games, as great as these players are, to play at what you might call tech, textbook uh, with as least cue ball movement as possible. Um, it does. It's, it's not something that you just get up and do. Now these guys will have big high runs and a lot of them because they recover so well. But for the most part, they're not going to have the knowledge of the game as like a maybe a Ralph Suke or some of the, the guys Thorsten, that have, Thorsten, yeah, yeah. Thomas right. Inger. Right. You know, as far as Euros, I'm, I'm considering. You know, Danny DiLiberto. You mm -hmm. know, there, we can. Mm -hmm. There's a big list uh, in America I could comment on because I I know all all of them or of them. Uh, you know, I've been told about him how great they played. Well, is he going to eventually wind up with a side pocket break shot here on the using the four ball? Uh, uh, I don't really like that. He is he coming back for the seven now? I was going to say he could use the seven as well. He, he could, he could, could get, but you're going into the back of the stack, you know. Yeah, uh, you, know, you want to catch a corner. The cushion, right. Well, no, you play for the cut on it, and you come off the rail and go into oh, the corner yeah. balls. So that's no, what I was saying. Yeah. That's what I think he'll do here. He'll follow to the end rail, right? Well, he's going to bounce just he, a little he bit. To, he needs to be Whoa. three, four inches out. Whoa, that's too much, isn't it? Uh, or no, corner, the corner, no, the corner ball might have him hooked. It's hard to no, tell. No, I think he's okay. I okay. think he's okay. So you're saying when you come off the short rail here, you want to catch the corner ball and then glance into the side rail with the cue ball. Yeah, and you're really playing for one of the corner balls to come out, whether that be the 210, uh, well, the, the 12. Uh, but if yeah, if you hit into the one and all that, you got to get a lot of pace to to right, figure. Right, but isn't his target the twelve here? Absolutely, it is. Or the five or the coming five. back. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that way. You get the cue ball loose. If you come back into the middle of the pack, you're you're uh, as Danny would say, you're gambling. <laughs> no, as Danny would say, you're going to sleep in the street. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think he's got a, a several sayings for that type yeah. of situation. So. A long shot on the 10. Well, you got to open them up here, I believe. 
Um, the four is a better ball to break him open with than the 11. Yeah, you don't want to go into the four with the 11 no, right here. unless he can. I think you'll, you'll see him peel off the five or two first. Yeah, um, if he can get around the five, he'll shoot the two. Okay, and now the four ball would be the ideal shot. And, and plenty say, of open. And he's got the five for the insurance ball. Well, I was going to cover it up. I was about to say, uh, I don't know what's going to happen off the top of the rack right there. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have to shoot a real thin 3-12 mm -hmm. combination, I think. I That's why I didn't think he would hit it that hard. I thought he would let three or four more come off, two or three more come off. Because when you don't hit it hard, you're going to keep him there where you can re-break again or just a little bump. Okay. The 914 got a little funny. It may be it might dead. be wired. Yeah. But there's balls around it to open it up. I don't think it's that big of a deal yet. Yeah, He's again, yeah, that's just what I'd said. Like, a lot of times, you'll break the balls once kind of firm, and once you get them shook open, you don't have to break firm again. You can just break and let it two or three come off because they're always going to be near each other. So... I don't... I don't know. Do you think he should just go ahead and accept the 11 ball that's in a nice position for a break shot, or is he going to maybe want to use the 13 just because it's on the better side for him? Well, not only the better side, and you can see. Ball, yeah, if you five. Get, yeah, exactly. Right. The 5, you get full on it, you roll on the side, and you just follow right forward. So is your triangle here the 6, 5, 13? Most likely, with the th but the 3 is a little funny getting on that 6. Uh, uh, oh, wow. That Young just got to be lack, lack of concentration there. I mean, he's showing a little emotion too. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I don't mind him. I don't mind the emotion. I just didn't expect it. That's all. Well, he's shown that a couple of times this week, uh, and he did a couple of times at the U.S. Open. I mean, I think that's just youth, and you know, um, uh, he's a competitor. Absolutely. But, and it's a good point for me to now lead you into a question I did want to ask you. That tends to use up some energy when you get upset like that, right? You use up a little bit of your energy. Oh, yeah, your and, heart rate gets going. Right. And so how do you deal with tension when you go back to your chair and you're stewing a little bit? Do you have a or, – and I guess more so not in your chair, but now at your next inning. Do you, are you carrying – how do you not carry that with you back to the table? No, I understand here playing straight pool, he'll probably be okay as far as he'll, he'll probably have some time to cool off. But, uh, but yeah, playing nine ball, I mean, I just, I just know how tough our game is that, you know, I don't expect mistakes. That's not what I'm saying. But I know they're going to happen, uh, okay. you know, and, and I'm not going to make – fewer mistakes going forward if I'm thinking about the mistake I just made so you know and and I can't say I quite honestly think about something I, I think I was fortunate enough I played a lot of sports in my life prior to pool so I learned that lesson mm -hmm. before pool came along so <coughs> I, I may not be the best person to ask mm -hmm. as far as that mm -hmm. because of course, okay. I get upset about mistakes, but I'm saying that I'm, I'm actually, I think that's one of my attributes is okay. what I'm saying is, is getting rid of it quickly. Okay. <clears throat> well, I know you play a lot of golf and, and you have played in your life, right? Yeah, a lot years of golf. Ago, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and I make a lot of bad shots. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the, the point I'm going for here, Jay, is that in golf, tempo is a big part of your game. Is oh, it not? yeah, absolutely. And I think that translates to pool as well. And especially, and actually, I heard this from Jack Nicholas, not personally, but it's from Jack, that somebody asked him, Jack, when you're, you know, last two holes of the Masters or whatever, and things are tight and tense, how do you deal with it? And Jack said, tempo. Okay, we're on, we're, we're going to take a time, yeah, we're going to take a time out. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and uh, Dennis Ocuyo in our second match of the Straight Pool Invitational. Uh, Dennis Ocuyo leads uh, Young Feeler uh, 95 to 86. Uh, this is the one to where if he goes in and he catches the bottom of the one, which I don't think that's possible, and with follow, he could go right off the side of the rack. So I like him just catching the 13 real full 
Just a little bit of like medium. Oh, he hit it way hard. That's why he got back to the end rail on it. He opened him well enough to where it may not hurt him, but he's got to remember that. Like there, he could have opened him very nice still with a lot lighter swing. Remember, when you got a lot of cut on the ball, speed on the cue ball is very natural. So, it's, you know, it's when you're real full on the ball is whenever you have to add a little bit. Okay, he's got a long two ball and it's really similar to a nine ball he missed to open the to open this match. Nice shot drawing back on the three. He had to really. I don't think the nine passed the four. Playing for the three. Okay, he did that, I'm just assuming, because he's going to draw the cue ball onto the 12 and the 4. be very difficult not to be able to get a shot if he did that, but it makes the ball a little bit missable. With the 6 there and the 14, though, I kind of like it. I, I think at the worst, he could get jacked up over the 12 if he's stuck. But Might have the 10, too. Yeah, when the 6 up long is going to be available if he right. doesn't have anything else. Oh, that's, that couldn't have landed better. Now yeah. he's got a break open yeah, the shot. Yeah, but don't murder it, though. No. Just medium. Right, right. Fifteen's going to open everything. The fifteen's going to open the right. five, and the, the one, seven the seven. will stay there for a break ball. Yeah. Oh, he, he, he must have been a, little, a flat. Little, little flat on it, yeah, for the cue ball to go there. Can he get out for shape right here? I'll tell you that. Uh, has he got to play short side on the uh, 14 or the 12? Playing all ball fouls. Can't afford to rub anything. Oh, he's got the six, six though. Yeah. He's really got to start thinking about that break shot, though. He's looking at the five to try and open. And I'll tell you what it'll do if he can ease it. If he can ease it somewhat, uh, the seven will open off the eight for a break shot. He's going to push the eight a little low, I think. But th I think if he doesn't overhit it, I think the seven will hold. Yeah, and the eight's going near the pocket, right? Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's going to get cut low of the, the right. rack for sure. Well, I and thought he'd hit it firmer, but actually he's got the seven in a pretty decent position, but the eight's just a little bit tricky to, to get to now. Yeah, he's going to have to use the 13 probably to fall on the short side of the eight. Well, if he can get to the 15, can't he access the eight without uh, moving the seven ball? Yeah, maybe, but... Uh... I don't know if he can get a full enough hit on the 15 and without playing short side, meaning shoot, yeah. shoot it in one of the upper pockets. Okay, now you play the 13. You, well, actually, you shoot the 14. Would you come across for the 8? I don't think so. I think I use the 13. I shoot the 14, then the 6 up long, stopping my ball right there. The reason being is if you get bad here with a little angle, you could go into the 7. Or if you get straight, you're going to have to play short side on the back of these balls. So he did pretty well, though. And now he's in a good spot. Don't be afraid to shoot the six up long from right here. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. A lot of people try to move the cue ball up a little too much. Well. Wow. Can't believe he's doing this. I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm dry. I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, actually, if you think about it, if you look at it, if he plays a stop shot here, he's perfect, isn't he? To and shoot the 15, go into the cushion and bounce? No, I agree, but I, I think it also becomes a little bit of a missile ball ball when you're going all the way up and back. Okay. And, and I think he More cue ball movement than yeah, necessary. Yeah, I think he could have... And not only that, I'd like to see him start playing a little bit more of that, that little pattern to get Ooh. through the rack. Ooh, got a lot of pinch on that one, didn't he? Well, that's why I like going into the cushion and out on that one, at least from how I see it. Yeah, anytime. Even if, yeah. You, you know, you had a little bit more margin for error, even though it seemed like you were crossing the line versus going down the well, line. Well, he's going to apply a little top left English, yeah. and he's going to spread the cue ball out, uh, broaden the cue ball out to where he has a nice angle. And as Kenny said, 
Listen, people, anytime you have a choice of going forward or backwards with the cue ball, you're going to have much more touch going forwards with the cue ball, meaning hitting the ball with a rolling uh, effect rather than draw. Uh, well, you better hope good. this eight hangs. And it did. Yeah. I like the way he hit the cue ball. I just think he should have made, maybe, maybe not quite as hard, but uh, he'll take this. Yeah, and he can't shoot the 13. It no, becomes missable. Got to be careful with the, the go with the 11 here. Got to yeah. watch out. He hit that a little firmer than I would have, too. I would have eased into those balls a little more. You but betcha. <laughs> you betcha. If that five bounces up, he could find himself pinned on this back rail with really not much of a shot. Not much of a good shot, anyways. He needs to get the pinch on there on this just to catch the backside. Oh, oh he's going to go forward. Okay. I thought for sure he would draw this. Okay. He might have been afraid of drawing the nine into the nine, and the nine goes in and ties up in there. But he's still got a little a little work to open this cluster. He's got a lot of work. Yeah. That's another reason why I would have drew the nine and held for the ten. You'll notice that the nine's not going to hurt you going into the pack, and it might end up being a, a helper into the pack. Now you've moved the ten all the way up the side rail, and it's become kind of a useless ball. I know it doesn't sound like that means much, but that's just like that's just like breaking uh, breaking the balls real hard from underneath. Uh, you're pushing a lot of them up, and you need you need balls there to help each other. Now he can shoot the 13 and come across and hit the rack. But again, he doesn't have to murder it. Just catch a real solid hit. Oh, oh. He may have the uh, 11 there. Yeah, well, he's thin and he's elevated and he's going right towards that corner, so. Mm-hmm. Well, at least he's got a, an opportunity. No, I think it. he could scratch on it, but I think there's no, a I way to. I think he's wide. Yeah, but I'm saying if he cut overcut it to the left side. Oh, gosh. Wow. Hit it right into the point. You know, eventually one of these mistakes is going to cost one of these guys the match. I mean, you. I don't think you would have expected so many innings. No. I think it's solely from uh, a lot of cue ball movement, a lot of rebreaks that are mm -hmm. unnecessary, and really just not inspecting the rack and figuring out how I can make this easy on myself. Yeah, there's been a lot of cue ball travel between these two guys, uh, more so most likely than we've become accustomed to seeing in straight pool, because that's one of the things to, to play your best straight pool is you want to minimize your cue ball on Fell every little, shot. Fell yeah. a little short on that four as well. Now, is he going to go into him here? Oh, he's going to get high. Think he's going to get. He's going to get high on the uh, 15 to cut yeah. the 15, and hopefully that'll open everything. If he can catch, oh, he's cutting the 14 and opening. Pardon me. Wow, moved them all. Well, that worked out well. <laughs> How nice is the yeah, six? Yeah, look at that six. Yeah. And he's got a beautiful key ball right next to it. He's got a little angle on this three, so he's got to pay attention. I would go forward if he's straight and play the one. If not, I'd pull it over for the 15 in the side. That's it. And you want to stay above this one. Mm -hmm. That's too thin. Wow, that's way thin. Now he's got a lot of movement, and I think that's just from looking. Not saying he didn't know where he wanted to get, but when you look, you feed your brain that information that, that where it's going to be like... Yeah. It's going to be almost hard not yeah. to get exactly where right. you want. So. Well, remember yesterday we were talking about picking a spot? Right. And he didn't do that. No. He just looked. Maybe he didn't even look. Maybe he just felt where it was going to go. I think he knew where he wanted to go, but like, and also that fast pace, that fast pace will, will, uh, well, sometimes will create your arm, errors. Sometimes your, your hands and arm go faster than your brain. Well, and he's a young man, and a lot of young men have faster pace. I'm sure he'll slow down, but I just think proof's in the pudding. Mm -hmm. If you look through professional sports, uh, none of the other professionals really get in that, that much of a hurry when they can help it. So, and I think the same applies uh, to pocket billiards. And what we've uh, kind of 
not mentioned much is that this is still a very close competitive match. Either guy can win. The uh, outcome is certainly in doubt. We could have 10 more turns each, or Josh could finish it out right here. It's just the way the match has gone. And really, I know Dennis has played some straight pool tournaments, that's for sure, but he's also played some straight pool events where all they care about is the high run, meaning it's almost a specialty event. You play by yourself, you get so many chances. Well, that's the Derby qualifying um, right, for, right, the, right. for the Fells Memorial. But um, I'll tell you, Dennis, uh, he won the, uh, was well, just a few years ago, but he won the U.S. Open 14-1. Oh, the one in New York? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if, no, I think it was in Connecticut. It was just a year or two ago. It wasn't the ones that we've come to know over all the years. Okay. It might have been the, something the CSI, CSI put on. Event, right, yeah, yeah. right, 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 in Connecticut. You. But And he also won the won a derby a couple of years ago as well, but that's when he did all those high-run qualifications. What's he going to do with this one and four right here? This one and four is a little tricky. The four goes up in the corner of, of the upper left-hand corner, and maybe the one goes in the lower right-hand corner. It's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, I think it does, actually. He could move the three into it right now, though. Well, that's what I was thinking. The three yeah. will run right into it. But now, why well, he almost got funny. Things happen. Okay, and this is that low break ball you were talking about, Kenny, that 11. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see if he plays for that and just see how he plays it. A lot of times when it's on the lower part of the rack, for me, it's a little scary to hit it really hard. Right, right. That's where I say sometimes you might think about chipping just a couple out. It all depends really on your angle and how close you are to the break ball. And really how you trust the table. Sometimes mm -hmm. you get on tables that the balls just don't open as well, whether right. it be a few pits on the table where you rack them or maybe the felt's a little slower. But here, you wouldn't figure there would be much of a question mark uh, concerning those things. But mm -hmm. Well, actually, you know, straight in on the four <clears throat> is okay for the 11 break, right? That's not bad. You know? Not bad. I would rather have the distance of, like, straight in on the, the three well, for the break. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean. But uh, I'm an old man, and compared to Joshua Filler here, he doesn't mind a little distance. But, yeah. Well, that's, actually, he did play yeah, it your way. That's, that's the way that's I a like way a little, play. little bit better, yeah. if available. Same angle, but closer. Right, exactly. And no problem reaching it. And once again, you can see it's almost parallel with the cue ball in a straight line. Uh, in this case, he's he needed to be inside a little bit. It'll give him a better ability to control the cue ball. Now, do you like coming forward here with maybe just a half a tip of right and coming out to the center of the table? Um, or do you like giving it a good pop? I gotta get, gotta, a, you gotta get a little. See, you gotta see where it is. When a little the, better when look. Open. I don't even think you have to add the right and come Maybe to the not. center. Maybe not. going to pick it up naturally. Well, that and I think you can. Oh, he's drawing off now of it. I like, I, I like that. I like the draw too yeah. because Ooh. of how oh. far up it was. Okay, got a shot on the six. The fourteen goes in the lower right. I don't I see much of the, anything uh, else. The well, seven eight. About, what about the thirteen? Eh, it's close. I mean, I think I it think may it be makeable. No, I think it goes if he can get the cue ball in there. I think maybe He's also going for the 14 or well, the seven eight combination may be playable like if he gets over here and he can't get the rack open you'll see him play the seven eight I think or come one rail into the seven and open for the eight mm -hmm. that's a nice shot mm -hmm. and that kind of shot you can shoot with some speed you know why because you're playing position not only on the eight but the seven should come loose like so yeah a little harder than I thought he would shoot it because he made the cue ball deflect and he almost missed missed the hit on the seven. Okay, what about the is the ten in the way for the three in the side? It is, isn't it? I think. Is he going on the rack again? Oh, that's dangerous. Not really so much you thinking about the cue ball getting pinned, but you really don't know how the balls are going to spread in that position. And you're starting to knock him away. When you keep right. doing that, you're knocking him away from the from the good zone. And he has other balls he needs to break. Would you consider playing the 10 and then playing the 13 to open that cluster? Right yeah, now? especially if I could hit it with a high ball and just follow out behind right. the 2 and 3. Exactly. He may play the 3 to get a little better, but I kind of like it right now, don't you? Well, he's going he's gonna to use the 7. Oh. And then. 
That's okay. Yeah, all right. It's all right. Yeah. He's going to be diving into the side of the balls, though. So, But you still kind of figure they're going to come apart. Well, the reason I like going now is because you're pushing them to where there's a lot of open space. Well, he's, he's a little too thin, uh, but he's going to shoot it here shortly. Or no, he's going to the seven. I thought he had changed his mind. Oof, oof. Now he's elevated. He's super thin on the one. He's elevated on the two. Well, there's nothing pretty here. No, not Gosh, at all. look at this. Not at all. And I hate to say it looks like bad luck, but... Uh, he, uh, he didn't go into those balls with much authority, or he didn't hit on the stack where he intended to. Yeah, I think he's going to be end up forcing to shoot... Uh, the two? I think so. Yeah. He could. He can't, he can't play the five off the thirteen. I think it's too thin. He could have. He could shoot at the one, but I think he's got to hit downward on the ball to try and avoid the scratch in the side. So I think instead of that, he would rather be able to hit the ball a little more naturally and shoot in the two. But he's close enough to the one where at the twelve. I don't like that at all. Stretching. Yeah, uh, that was a little more of a hope. <laughs> He, he had no ability to stroke from the position his body was in. He couldn't really pull the cue back and get through it because he ran out of he ran out of body room. Yeah, he's left uh, the yeah, tennis yeah. really just the two ball to get started, and really that's the one you want to save to break. But that's okay, not to break, but the key ball to set up the break shot. Excuse me. He's got other well, balls to work with with the four there also. And after all this, uh, here we are in a match that's one one point uh, difference between two players after an hour and a half, and probably more ragged play than we'd have expected, and some you know some kind of play that we we did expect. Yeah, and uh, just like the eight ball, though these guys don't play it all the time. Uh, it's not a game, you know. You might practice some straight pool, but mm -hmm. like as far as Dennis, he he probably only plays it exclusively when he's competing, and so yeah, just like his eight ball game uh, early in the week, it, it 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 had a little bit more cue ball travel, but he got better with the patterns, and I think the same thing's gonna you're gonna see the same thing from all the players here playing straight pool. One sixteen to one sixteen. Yeah, I definitely don't leave the nine though. The one's new him doing him no good overall. I mean he's good at that twelve and fifteen as well, so Well, wouldn't you think if you play the nine and stop, you could play the one and come forward for the fifteen in the in the corner the nine's going in? Yeah, well, not go, now. Well you could fall behind the Well, I guess you could for for the twelve, but Oh, no, you don't want to. You don't want to touch the 13 here. No, he's going to brush the bottom though, so it's okay. He's just barely, lightly going to brush it. Okay, he, he cheated it the all. pocket a little bit to avoid hitting it. See, now this is the same kind of situation he had before. If the one's going to be the key ball, then which side would you want to be on? You want to play it in the pocket near the cue ball right now, right? When you get eventually get to the one? Well, yeah, you would think because, you then know. you can just float that, over? Yeah, and that way you don't have to come behind the, the 13. And not saying that's a big, huge problem, but you'll make a, you'll tend to make a few more mistakes trying to swing the cue ball behind that ball than you would just uh, being like, like definitely Kenny said, he'll want to pull the cue ball on the other side where he's standing now. Stay off the rail. Mm -hmm. That's the key. You know, you expect these players to get the right angle right there, but even if you don't get the right angle and you're off the rail, a lot of times they can produce. Now, this time, is he going to follow with the outside He's like he should have last time? Yeah. Okay, that's better. I think he better. learned his lesson. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah. He and just, again, yeah. see, straight line? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is ideal. Now he can do anything with the cue ball. Uh, I, I kind of like forward, don't you? Yeah, medium follow. Mm -hmm. Not a hard follow. Medium follow. I think, anyways. I always have to see after the rack's off. I should know better, I think, but. Nah. It's a little dicier than you think. I might draw off the rack, because if you catch the two a certain way, you can go right off that 11 and scratch. Oof. 
watch the spin here. And I don't know if he can get at the six, and I don't think the eight goes. Oh, maybe it does. Well, he must have the six. He wouldn't have got down that quick. Okay, and he's going to go into the rack again here. But the key here is, is don't blast Not lightly. Them. Yeah, you don't want to move a bunch of balls up table. Then, then now you don't have a, much to work with when you're talking about producing break shots. I mean, you'd like to think we got the 14 already, but you got you want to have options. That was a decent that speed. That was good speed. Yeah, Wasn't decent it? speed. Yeah. But even with, uh, he had a lot of safety valves up, uh, you know, uh, insurance balls up, uh, upstairs a little bit. So even so, he could have hit it even lighter, really. But it's a good speed. Get at that 412 they're doing, you're no good. So just get over there and get on that one and all that as soon as possible. You guys can see the nine ball. It's kind of right next to the stack. For me, it's too close. I would not want that for a break shot. I'd want it moved a couple inches to the right. You'll just, uh, I would draw into this three. I wouldn't roll. Yeah, I like drawing okay. because you're always holding for a ball on the side just in case the three I, gets a little funny. Now he could, can he just come around for the 10 where he can shoot the 10 and bump the nine out a, a couple inches to make it a little better shot? Well, I guess not. I'm not sure what he's thinking about as a break ball. I don't, I'm not in love with the nine myself. Not where it is. I think it's a little more unpredictable, but. But he knows as well as we do. He's got to take care of that four and 12. Don't want to mess around and wait on that. What he wanted to do is shoot the 10 and just barely bump the, right, bump I guess. the nine. But that's he too just much, did it right? a shot later. No, I think he's okay. It's, really? It's, it's not going to move a lot right here? Unless he draws just, out of it, huh? Kind of stun it by it. And just graze it. That's fine. Yeah, that's pretty decent. He's going to have to shoot the five, but that's all right. Yeah. I mean, you do have to make a shot every now and again. And this yeah, is this, not this this tough. Was, yeah, this isn't tough at all. So, but, he, but he recognized... You know, what we were talking about before was that the nine looked good, but it was actually too close to the stack. And that goes back to what you were saying. Your cue ball would have no energy once it made contact with the object ball. Right. You would almost certainly have to draw it. And then it's right. going to be next to the bracket. And, and really, if you have to draw it or throw it, now pocketing the ball becomes a little bit funny. He's doing the right thing here. 11-1, 12-7, then fall on the two to get on the nine. No, he was doing the right thing there. I don't know why he changed. I mean, he can do it a few other ways. He could use the 11, but I really, I really like shooting the 11 and then the 1, 12, and you'll notice they just yeah. kind of connect to the 7. He's going to instead shoot the 12 and then the 7, but then he's going to have to move the cue ball a little bit to get the right angle on the 11 to get to the 2, so. Yeah. I don't think Dennis cares that much about how far he's got to move the cue ball. No, uh, or yeah. how long a shot he right. has sometimes. We talked about it last night. He's right. not a tall man, uh -huh. so a little distance doesn't bother him as much. But now he's going to have to shoot a two ball from what looks like a little more distance. I think he can get near the side pocket area. I mean, he's not straight here. No. He but can draw at the two, right? No, of course, but I'm saying uh, the other way, he would have been rolling the seven in right now, just right up next to the two, and everything would have been real easy. Not much concern. Again, he got a little straight here, so he's going to have to let his stroke out, but don't overhit it. Okay, great Very shot. Very nice. Now, Cuyo with 135 to 116 lead. We're going to 150. Well, Dennis needs the break ball and the rest of the rack. Yeah, you're exactly right. But the rest of the rack will make him have to shoot the, uh, no, no, he can still leave the, yeah, it'll make no, him have to good. shoot the break ball. For yeah, the, but he don't have to break. He don't have to break. He <laughs> right, just has right. to he make the break ball. He just needs the rest ball. of the rack, right? Yeah. So, and if it you're. Was a, well, I'll, I'll tell you later. No, I'd, rather, okay. I'd, rather, I'd rather watch this here for a sec. And if you're just joining us, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the 2017 Make It Happen Straight Pool Imitational. This is our second match in the round robin stages. I'm Jeremy Jones, joined by Kenny Schumann. We're with AccuStats Video Productions. 
right here in Edison, New Jersey. Now don't get fooled by this six ball here. Hit it with a high ball. You'll notice the 415. Don't depend on producing one of these low ones. Get above the balls here as much as you can. Make sure you get out a little bit. Yeah, the, the 415 is the only issue here. The seven looks like it passes clearly uh, once the eight's out of the way. And he's got the five and the three to open those two up, so. He's got plenty. I mean, don't panic about the 415. Yeah. A lot of people say, I got to get to that. I got to get to that. I well, got to get to that. And then you do it unnaturally, and then you get yourself hemmed up. I think I would pull out on the 10, 12, and 3. That gives me a lot of options to get out, right. to, to get out, uh, shoot the three ball and get at that 415 while the five's still down there. And also, doesn't that allow you more real estate for staying out of trouble? Oh, absolutely. It's Once just like clear off, clear off a few of the stragglers. Oh, this one's a little dicey. Uh, it's just because mm. I don't know if it's easy to go by the five and still it, contact those balls. It must be going right into the four. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, or he, he wouldn't have played it. But where's that going? Oh, okay. he's lucky. He's a little lucky that caught the point. Well, and it would have been unlucky if he w made Tied the four travel all that far and just happened to get on the side of the 11 where nothing went. So... Now it's just, uh, just as Kenny had talked about to start this rack, he just needs to run to the break ball, and then as soon as they're re-racked, get the break ball to get his first win in uh, match two of our straight bowl invitational. He doesn't have to bump anything from here. No, no. no he doesn't that, have to run into another no, ball or open anything up. Nothing needs, uh, nothing needs rebroke. He needs to come back out to the center. He's got the 10, 12, I, I, and... Yeah, I was yeah, going to ask you if, to I was gonna ask you if you would right now go to the 10. Absolutely. Uh, that I way you open up the 15 right, or the 7 and right. the 1, excuse me. Right, and if you don't quite get there on the 10, you've got outs, right? Yeah, there's no, no questions here. Yeah, that's definitely the shot. Definitely the shot. He could have used a little bit more, but now if he wants to roll forward and bump him, nothing okay. wrong with that, too, because... Sure. That's almost as easy as trying to draw the cue ball to the side rail and back over, Might and he's be. got plenty of insurance. Right, right. Might be even easier. That's what, yeah. yeah. Anytime bumping into him makes everything easier, just like playing eight ball, then then it's okay. Hmm. He can do a lot of things, though. He doesn't really have much worries. He's got to just make sure that he doesn't leave the last ball in the rack, and he just makes sure he gets a shot at him. <laughs> Okay, now he'll peel off the seven and the one. He's going to leave the two for the last here, just to, so that makes it easy to fall up on the four on the side. Wouldn't you play the the seven and the one, the three, the two? Right. Yeah. Okay. The two is last. Uh, now, if you he think gets a little. The two's last? Yeah, if he gets a little angle. So not thought, last, I, last. I'm talking oh, about oh, last oh, on these group. of these right. groups. Yeah, the, right. The, exactly. The eleven's last, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. The eleven's the last ball of the match. It's a winning game, winning ball. Right. You just want to stay up this side of the table for your deuce so you can float down, right? Yeah, you got a little bit of a stretch here on the three ball. You can play the two, come he, around. He's going to end up leaving the or three just draw last, it over. I think. Maybe he doesn't know what he needs, you know? I mean, he might not have looked at the score. He may think he needs to, to get position on the break ball oh, to well. continue. No, he's doing... No, well, Cosmo's going to tell him you're going to play for two once he gets close. Well, not only that, he knows. Yeah, he, he knows, knows, or else I he know. wouldn't be peeling this one yeah, away. Yeah, of course he knows. He's just doing it with a little more cue ball movement than, uh, uh -huh. say, you or I would have done. Okay, all ball fouls now. Got to concentrate here. He's got to get the cue ball just clear of the four up by the head string. Oh, that's way oh. light. And that's what I was thinking. Oh. I, I was thinking that, you know, being elevated right here, you could lose concentration and make a mistake. Wow. Well, this is the one game you don't want to have shot a 147. And he's got to hope that slows down and also gives him an angle to get back on the one. Well, it's gonna, he's going to have to short side the one, isn't he? Or get below the rack and cut the one. He could have got below the rack and cut the one, and he's going to go into the pack. Now he's going to have a hard-pressed time catching much of it without yeah. shooting this with a little inside and a lot of speed. Would you give any consideration to calling safe, pocket the ball, 
and put Dennis on the top rail as best you could. Yeah, either that or even if I could play the one safe below the rack and put him on the top rail is even better, right, I think. Right, even without yeah. talking the ball, but you right. got to hide the one or pocket it. Yeah, we're not going to see that here, I don't Probably think. Probably not. He's, too, he's, he's far too aggressive a player for that, but... Hey, you might see it, though, if he can't get it, if he really feels like he can't get it at the rack. Oh, great shot. Great shot. Now, is he going to come away with anything? Yeah. He's Did got anything seven. open? Seven's good in the side, I think. It's, That's not easy. Well, no, but, I mean, it's... Uh, you don't it's have the 12 or the 3? He might have the 2. Oh, yeah, you're right. But if he goes through the gap, he'll have the 9. Oh, he did have the 3. 7, and then break him with the 2. Might have the wrong angle on the 7. He might be coming away from it. But... Uh, kind of... And it looks good to me, unless you're going to play this and then uh, play think, the 12. I, I think the pink four has got the two covered up just ever so you slightly. Think? Okay, yeah. well, maybe that's why. I think the six is the shot, really, with the 14 there. Uh, you can't go really wrong as far you don't figure to get to get hemmed up. Wow, I'm surprised he either didn't. If he's going to hit follow, go ahead and put something on it or draw off the balls. I mean, I, you hate to be elevated, but. Also, you got to know playing straight pool, though. Uh, oof. Oof. Now what? Did he 11? get a shot? Yeah, 11. He almost got too far, though. He's always got that two ball up there as far as a safety valve. And I'd like to think that he's not going to leave the two to play position on that 10. He could, I guess, but I don't think so. I don't think he's going to do that. Now I shoot the five and get on up. Uh, maybe I peel off the 15 just to open the 14 for two pockets, but I'm really not in love with just... Oh, I'm with you about not leaving the two for a key ball. Yeah. You, you, don't, want, you don't want anything to do with that. Yeah, I go up and get that get as soon now. as they're open. I'd go now. Ooh, what'd you do here, Joshua? I almost made a mistake. Is he hitting him again? He might have to because the he couldn't play him up in the corner because the two had it blocked. Now he's got to play the two, but fortunately he grazed them enough where both those balls have pockets. But it didn't have to work out that well. Get there? He's gonna have he to make the cue ball move. Yeah, he's yeah. got to come around. Whether it be all the way around or just one rail, now he's going to have a lot of angle. And it's a blind pocket. I'm not he's... so sure what he's upset about. Uh, that was. Well, he didn't want this big of an angle. I know, but it wasn't like the table did it to him or anything. Is what I'm, my yeah. point is. Is uh, he kind of raised his hands like, "What's this table doing to me?" But meanwhile, you know. You know what I'm getting at, Kenny? Yeah. Just... yeah, yeah. No, I do know what you mean. I'm still, I'm still sitting here, kind of in shock about Dennis's missing the one ball right. with the, the the last two that you could throw your cue at and make. This is missable here. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, well, what's going to happen? Oh, he got lucky because the 11-14 is sitting pretty, and Dennis needs three. And he's definitely playing the combination. There's no way he's going to shoot the 10. Well, not our cleanest match of straight pool, ladies and gentlemen, uh, but I guarantee you these guys will get better. Well, and, you know, coming off of four days of eight ball and you just played the U.S. Open, and like you said, you play straight pool about once a year, and not many of these guys even played in the recent straight pool before the U.S. Open. It's mostly so it's, a di it's such a different mindset that probably had more to do with the ragged play than... Well, that and ball and, you, know, ability. you can see uh, Dennis isn't feeling his best. I mean, these guys do a lot of traveling. They do a lot of uh, a lot of traveling uh, and playing a lot of different places. I mean, at times they're going to get fatigued, even without the expect expectation of getting fatigued. And now Dennis Aculio, just a simple draw shot away and a 13 away from getting his opening win. And uh, 
I know, like we both said, that uh, the play will get better between these two. And uh, we all expect that, and certainly it'll happen. Uh, but once again, we'd like to thank you for, I'm Jeremy Jones, and for Kenny Schumann and AccuStats Video Productions, thank you for joining us at the afternoon session of day one of the straight pool. It's the Make It Happen straight pool. We have two matches coming up this evening at 7, Appleton and Van Boning, 9.30, Duel and Feeler. So I appreciate y'all's time, and we'll see you at 7. Thank you very much. The future of billiards training is here. Introducing the DigiQ, a small electronic coach that fits inside of a custom rubber housing and attaches to the butt end of any pool, snooker, or carom cue. Simply slide the DigiQ onto the butt end of your cue, push the power button, and then play the game of your choice. The DigiQ constantly monitors your stroke for inconsistencies and gives you immediate feedback by silently vibrating when it detects jab strokes, steering, body English or movement, standing up during your stroke. The DigiQ will force you to bear down on every shot. It will condition you to keep your head and body still during your follow through, leading to a lasting improvement in the consistency of your stroke. The DigiQ comes in three different modes, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Get serious about your game. This is Q Training Evolved. Can you beat the DigiQ? Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A Q with a revolutionary X-Shox dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum Q control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only Q that matters.